Project Winner is a social deception game that has an emphasis on team play as well as solo play. There are many more features, mechanics, and interactions that add a new layer of deception based gameplay, yet having combat keep the players engaged. Since it's a more complicated game, it's hard for new players to fully get a grip on trying out the game without being punished by good players. So to start us off, let's go over some small hidden details slash tips to help you guys get in the know. You run 10% faster while holding nothing in your current equipment slot. Both tools have the same hitbox and have the same stats, but break different resources faster so it's best to always make a sickle. Holding right click will allow you to see farther in a direction and certain items will give you even more range than others. The farthest item you can view with is a sniper rifle. All items and cosmetics are purely cosmetic, so changing body types won't make you a harder slash easier target to hit. Throwing items at people give a brief slowdown so you can catch up to them. When shooting people, aim at the waist. Poison can be cured with medkits. When fighting, always charge your melee weapons as close to 100% as possible, but never 100% since your next swing will start up slower. Now with that out of the way, we can discuss the game's flow on how the match will go. As soon as you spawn in, there are two things you should do instantly. Tell your role if you're a survivor based role. You know this by checking the color of your icon in the top right. If it's blue, then you're a survivor. If it's red, you're a traitor, and yellow means you're a neutral role. The second thing you should do is get a bonus objective unless you're in neutral role since you already spawned with one you need to complete. Bonus objectives will help you get more points for cosmetics at the end of a match, while stating your role early ensures you're more dependable and less risky to trust since traders have a delay in claiming roles. For roles like the factor, claiming them in text or voice chat instantly is a must. After doing those two steps, everyone will be gathering wood and stone to make the best item in the game, a melee weapon. Rocks give two stones, trees give one wood, and signposts give two. Don't ask me why. So once you've gathered one wood and one stone, you can make a weapon of your choice. You can either make a sickle, axe, or pickaxe. All three have their uses, but for starters, always make the sickle, since although every melee weapon has the same stats, they break other resources faster. The only melee weapon that breaks critical and necessary materials for your character's health is the sickle, since you'll be able to have a much easier time in breaking healing herbs and berries for food. Before you leave the cabin, it's important you have a lot of food and warmth. If you have low warmth, then your max HP will decrease drastically, and if you have low food, your max HP will decrease a small little bit, but you'll do less melee damage, so it's important to keep those things high. You can keep your warmth high by using vodka. You can also use campfires, or you can use several spawn campfires throughout the map, such as the druid fire. The cabin also provides warmth until the mega blizzard. The mega blizzard is announced in the top left of your screen, and as soon as that timer reaches zero, you're going to have very little time to escape, and everyone will start dying very slowly. So it's important to finish the match before then. To replenish food, you're able to eat berries or any type of object. Eating things raw will decrease your HP, but you're able to heal that back. Having a low hunger also makes you do less damage and you lose a small bit of max HP, so it's important to keep that stat high. That is why Sickle is a really good choice. After having your melee weapon, it's time to check the first objective. In every match, there is two objectives, the first and the second objective. The first objective can be one of the following objectives. Parts, Excavation, and Cipher objectives. We'll start off with the Parts objective first. There are three main resources, which are mechanical, electronical, and gas. These parts can be made with resources in the cabin, but they take too long, so it's not worth it. Every survivor should group up with three or more, but take note of who leaves with who, and then gather parts through bunkers. Bunkers come in multiple shapes and sizes, but there are three main types you will see. Normal bunkers, wolf bunkers, and open bunkers. Normal bunkers can either have two or three switches needed to open. Sometimes they will also have a bear guarding it. If there is a bear guarding it, it's guaranteed to be a two-person bunker. Inside will be four chests, and it'll have loot inside. Wolf bunkers will require one or two people to open, but appear to either have two or three switches. Once the hidden value is reached, one or two wolves will fly out, but the loot inside is worth it. Open bunkers will have two boxes, no switches, and have bad loot most of the time. So your choice in order to open them or not. Now back to the other objective types. Excavation will have you venture out using pictures given from the picture board and a shovel besides it. The shovel will allow you to dig parts up when you reach the corresponding part, collect all four, and it'll be complete. However, be warned, traders love to camp these spots. Cypher is easily the hardest objective for new players, so the best advice I can give to you is
No, but seriously, in Cypher, coordination is your only friend. Get three or more with you, run around aimlessly looking for bunkers until you spot these green indicators. Since you don't need the bunker components inside, designate only one person to enter the code bunker and get the code. This person will be the only one to get all the codes, since traders can either lie about the wrong code or sabotage it making it show the wrong one. Once you have three or four digits, then input the code. If you have three, just brute force the last number. If the person is obviously stalling, then kill the player since they're a trader and they're wasting time. Now the second objective will be shown through power lines. Follow these bad boys and you'll stumble upon the second objective, but be prepared since two wolves can potentially be there. Also, you can sometimes view the power line shadows from the cabin sometime, but you didn't hear that from me. As for the second objective, it can have three variations as well. Those being parts, wolves, and batteries. Parts is the same as before, but require much less material, so one or two bunkers should suffice. Wolves require you to fight animal AI in waves as you hold down a button. Stop holding the button in intervals in order to ensure you did not spawn more than one wave at a time, since it can prove too much to handle for inexperienced players. But before we discuss the battery objective, we need to talk about how to handle the animal AI. To handle wolves, just walk in a circle with nothing in your hand as shown here. Once you get the wolf turning, walk and smack the wolves. Rinse and repeat. Bears are a harder matter. You can try to bait out its slow attack which will momentarily slow and damage the player but it's far too hard to bait out and kill it in a timely manner. It is far better to have a good amount of HP than start smacking the bear at its sides. It can attack people to the side so charge your melee weapon and hit it as it dashes towards you. Now back to the second objective. Batteries is the last type of second objective. There will be three batteries like this around the map and you can actually find them before going to the second objective. These batteries are useless until you know where the second objective is, along with the first objective being done, so never grab them until both of these requirements are done. You simply then hoist the batteries to the second objective and then be done with it. After completing the first objective, you can also interact with the second objective to be given a visual indicator of where all the batteries are. Once both objectives are done, simply go to the cabin and call the escape vehicle. You'll be given a prompt where to go and only survivors can interact with it. So if you see their hands touching the knob, then they're guaranteed survivors. Now the traders have to ruin everything I just explained. But don't worry, since the traders get a few tools at their disposal. These black objects will be your bread and butter. Inside every crate there is a guaranteed energy drink that will increase your max HP. If you're bad at lying or doubt you can kill them since they're always grouped up, rushing for these crates is your best bet. Also after some time the trader airdrop will come down randomly on the map, which has a lot of useful supplies for the traders. These drops come in only when the first or second objective is not complete within their given timer, so it's an incentive for survivors to go as fast as possible. Neutral roles and roles in general are constantly being changed and added, so the best I can do for you is to tell you to walk down a few steps inside the cabin and simply check this piece of paper. It shows you what each role is and what they do. Now with all that baby basic stuff out of the way, it's time for the grown-up knowledge. The final lesson here is how to PvP. In games like this, deceit does have a place and helps you out sometimes, but if you want results, you gotta learn how to left click like a pro. When chasing someone, always have nothing in your hand for that 10% speed boost. If you they have more distance over you and they're more juice than you, give it up unless you know you can outmaneuver them or kill them later. When charging your melee blows, always go for that 99%, but you always want to ensure you get your swing last. So if you're low on health, then start spam hitting. This will help ensure you win melee duels against bad or mediocre melee duelists. Here's a tier list. Use it. Each gun is good, it just depends how well you can use it. No gun is bad, but there are objectively better weapons. The only exception is the base crossbow, but its purpose is to be upgraded to its much better brother, the poison crossbow. As I say before, aim at the waist to hit the shots, but the poison crossbow is wonky, so only shoot if you have ammo to spare or if they're running in a straight line away or towards you, because it's not a hit skin weapon. And that's it. But since you watched the whole thing, then there is one more secret to become the best at Project Winner. You have to, 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 have to,